And you are also going to get this white box. Lovingly calling this the white box. This white box will be strapped to the to the the big box. And this is what houses all the technology. So you're getting the fridge and you're getting the box all together, the white box. And um, I have taken the liberty of removing the straps. And once you remove the straps from the main box, this box will simply lift off. You don't have to cut it. There's nothing you have to do. So it looks like there is some styrofoam involved which is great. It is very well packed. Oh, graceful as a gazelle, as always. Let me pick all this stuff up. So yeah, it's well packed with uh, plenty of styrofoam for protection to make sure that your steak gauger gets to you in the best possible condition. All right, let me turn it around so you guys can see it. This is the beautiful stainless steel model. Steak gauger. Uh, I see on the back, I'll turn it around again, there is uh, some styrofoam taped here to protect the compressor. I'm going to take that off. I like it. I'm going to remove the plug while I'm back here. That is the plug for the refrigerator. So there are two plugs, obviously, one for the fridge and one for the steak ager technology, which we're going to get to in a minute. So inside, we have shelves, which we are going to remove. We're not going to use the shelves, because I have the trussing rack that I bought separately. So I'm just going to remove these racks, and you just got to lift up on the back, and then slide them out. You've got little styrofoam pieces to keep them from moving during shipment, which is really cool because then it doesn't break the glass. Down here in the bottom, we have an instruction manual. Very cool, very important. And we have their energy guide. So yeah, $31 estimated yearly cost to run the steak ager. Very, very cool. Get rid of that. This is going to have all your information on how to set up. We're going to go over all of it right now. Um, and I am ready. I'm going to call in my friend Ephraim, who you've seen, if you've watched my cooking show, you've seen Ephraim um, here before, because it, this really is a two-man job to pick the steak ager up. If you're going to put it, I'm mounting it on top of my existing steak gauger. So Ethan, if you don't mind, yep, all the way up. And boy, am I glad I didn't do that myself. Now let me just fix this side. Okay. We're good. Yep, there you go. Looks great. Hi, guys. Thanks, Ephraim. Appreciate it. Fantastic. Look at that. Now my tower of power is back in action. All right. So. Got some styrofoam everywhere. All right, so now let's go over and talk about the technology that comes in the white box. All right. Here comes Lynn. Fantastic. So again, this white box comes strapped to the main box. And when you open it, you're first greeted by a great quote from Scott Cobrin, the owner of Steakager. The good news is that dry aged steak is amazing. The bad news is that once you've had it, you'll never want anything else. Scott Coburn, head steak head, who we have uh, nothing but gratitude for. And I want to also give uh, kudos to Ryan Vick. Ryan Vick is the designer of all the steak ager technology. He worked closely with Danby to make sure that they uh, come together in a uh, really efficient and solid way. So thank you, Ryan. And Ryan is often on the Steak Ager family group. So if you're not part of the Steak Ager family group, definitely find it on Facebook and join the group. You can ask a ton of questions and find out what people are really doing right now with their Steak Agers. So it's a good place to get a lot of information and post your pictures and your successes with the Steak Ager. All right, in the beautiful white box, we have the heart of the Steak Ager, and that is 
the back plate. This back plate houses the fans, it houses the sensor, it houses the plugs for the humidity. If you choose to uh, go the charcuterie route as well, you'll have to get the humidity device. It's a separate um, accessory, but here's where it will plug in. And it also houses the UV light in the back, as you can see right there. So this is the heart of the unit, and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put this in first. So let's go back here. Now what you want to do with this is these tabs are what's going to hold it in. So you're going to slide it in to the second to last or second to top um, shelf rack, we're going to call it. And that's going to go right in here. And you're going to slide this all the way to the back. Like so. That is as easy as that is to install. Um, the next thing we are going to do is I'm going to show you this is just a like a baffle they call it. So this baffle gets connected to the bottom of the control panel. And there's two tabs and the two tabs will go in here. What this does is this actually takes the velocity of the fans and it shoots it down here and it creates like a cyclone of air, which is basically what you want when you're dry aging beef. All right, so if you are not going to be used getting the trussing kit, which we're gonna talk about in a little while, the um, basic model does come with this hanging rack, which you would simply slide in on that top spot. And that gives you, excuse me for crossing in front of the camera, that gives you a place to use these two hanging hooks. So you would tie up your roasts and then you would hang them from the rack like so. So that's where your meat will hang. All right. Now I want to turn around the steak ager because we got to get power to this unit. So I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to go this way. Get that. No, I'm going to go around the other way. Sorry to make you run around a little bit, Lynn. All right, I'm super excited about this. So, I'm going to look in the back. And part of that design, from what I was talking about, Ryan working with Danby, is how do we get power to the stake ager? Uh, we'll call it the head unit. So right in the back here is a plug and that is where your power is going to go to power the steak gauger. So I'm not going to plug it in yet. I want to get it all set up. So I'm going to just let this hang. And as you can see, I, I have on my, on my cart here, I have a power strip that I use a surge protector to protect the steak gauger. So we're going to bring this back around. Excellent. I'm just going to let that hang right there. Can you, yes. Can you tilt it a little bit to the left, please? Thank you. Okay. So now, that is your basic unit, and that is what you're going to get in the base unit. And I'm happy to uh, say that there is a discount code for the Grateful Chef, GC5, that is going to get you 5% off the price of the base model that we just discussed. Okay? And uh, so once you, at checkout, you'll put, just put in uh, GC5, apply that discount code, and you're gonna get the 5% uh, discount. It's only for the base model. It's not for the accessories, or um, we also have the beef program active right now. So it's just for the base model steak ager. So we're gonna move on. Every steak ager, it has the ability to upgrade to the dual mode. So the dual mode, what is the dual mode? Dual mode is, it gives you the ability to dry age beef 
all of them can. You go the dual mode route, that will give you the ability to make charcuterie too. And I've been making charcuterie in my steakager um, for quite some time. In fact, you can see it right down here. I'm gonna open it up real quick. So I have a capicola in here, it's a copa, it's almost ready. And I have this beautiful finocciano, which is a salami. Beautiful white mold, that's exactly what you want. So this happens at a higher temperature and a higher humidity than, than dry aging. So with this base model, you can change the settings to either make charcuterie or dry aged beef. It's a beautiful thing. I can do the same with this, but this is new electronics. It's, it's just a beautiful setup. Let's go over to the humidity package, which is right here. So there's these four items right here. So this is the humidification device. Genius in its simplicity. It's fantastic. It comes with these containers. This is the water container. So you're going to fill this to one and a half quarts. There's markings on the side. You'll fill that with water. And this is going to slip right under here. And we're going to do that inside the steak gauger. Let's do that. Now, before I put this in, I do have to continue with getting power to this back unit. You'll have this little pigtail with the, uh, with the model, the, the basic model. So what you're going to do is you're going to feed it through this grommet right here. And then there is a plug in the back. And you probably should do this before you put the baffle in. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'll take that baffle out like that. I'm going to feed it through the grommet and I'm going to plug it in to the hole that's on the other side of the plug that's in the back of the steak gauger. Make sure it's set really nicely, nice and tight. I'm going to put our baffle back in like so. And then the, you'll see this is an L, and you'll see one says P and one says H. This is power. We're plugging it right into to power the head unit. Make sure it's in there nice and tight. You can kind of feed this through if you want, make it look neater. I can do that later. All right, back to humidification. So this humidification device, you will see it houses the water pan. It has its own independent fan on top and it's got its own plug. So this really simply will just sit on the bottom of your steak gauger like so. And if you're not getting the trussing rack, you can simply go ahead and plug it in to the H spot right here. Let's talk about the humidifi the uh, trussing rack bundle. Okay. And we're gonna have to come back and do one more thing with the humidification device. Um, so this is the trussing racks. This makes it super easy to, tr to truss your roasts. You'll basically put the roast in fat side down and you will tie a string around one of these hooks, and then you're gonna lace it up just like a, you would a boot. And that's gonna really truss it. It's gonna help keep your roast in a nice round shape. And when you're done, you're just gonna swing this over and that's gonna help lock it in place, like so. Um, so, the trussing bundle comes with the trussing shelf. Now, since I am using this, I am going to install it here but when you do, you've got another grommet right here, and you're going to have to feed that cord right through. And then this gets installed on the bottom most shelf bracket. I'm going to slide that in like so. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to plug this in two, hold on, 
There must be something wrong because I cannot reach that. So we're going to have to talk to Ryan about that because perhaps it's not happening cor correctly. So we're going to see. I'll talk to Ryan about that. But you can see here. Well, actually, you know what? It's got to go underneath. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I think. It's got to go underneath this. Did you read the directions? I did read the directions. Leave it to my girlfriend to <laughs> suggest that I didn't read the directions. All right. We're going to talk to Ryan about that. Perhaps they sent me uh, a cord that's a little too short. Anyway. Or you put it in wrong. Or I put it in wrong. That's probably more likely. So then what the rack is going to do, or the shelf I should say, that is going to hold your two trussing racks like so. And that's your setup. That is your setup for dry aging beef right there. I love it. Very well thought out. Very high quality. These racks are great. So maybe if Ryan is watching, he can give, give us a little insight on what's going on with the shelf. But in the meantime, we got to turn around one more time because I want to show you the last component of the humidification device. So it comes with this handy dandy screwdriver. And that screwdriver, you can show this, Lynn. If you're not using a humidification device, you have this drip tray that comes with the base model. And what happens is the moisture will drip into the drip tray. The heat of the compressor will allow it to evaporate. Very simple. But since I have the humidification device, we are going to want to take this drip tray off using the included screwdriver which I love who doesn't need an extra screwdriver right let's see you take that off and simply slip it off and then you have here this hose you are going to locate the drain which is right here on top above the compressor and you are going to simply slide it onto the drain like so slide it up as best you can All right. I haven't done this before so we're, you're, you're, we're finding out in real time Put that in there, like so. And what that, what's going to happen is now the the moisture is going to drain out of out into the hose. And I will move the stay gauger over, and I will sit this here and allow it to drain into this container, which you'll have to empty out maybe once a month, maybe uh, a little more at the beginning of your aging sessions. But it all so it all depends on. Uh, you know, ambient humidity and how much humidity is in your steak gauger at the time. All right, so let me see if I can tuck that in there. I'm going to probably be doing charcuterie first, and I'll still need to install that, but that's awesome. And that, my friends, is the setup of the new steak gauger Pro 40. I'm going to do we're going to plug it in. I'm going to plug in that there. So I plugged in the stake gauger technology. And now we're going to plug in the fridge itself. Plenty of room here on my rack. All 
And as you can see, we've got power. I can feel the airflow coming. It's beautiful. And now let's talk about the setup. We'll go right to left. So the right, we're going to toggle the blue light on and off. The next one is to set Fahrenheit or Celsius. We are on Fahrenheit. Here is your temperature reading of the current temperature. And this is how you're going to adjust your temperature. Now, one thing to make note of, um, we always talk about the average temperatures with dry aging. So if you go to the app, which you're going to want to do once you got it at this point up and running, you can download the app and you're going to let it find the, uh, you know, let the app find the stake agent and you'll go through the setup on the app to get it up and running. But it, our app will tell you current temperature, current humidity, and it'll give you average temperature and average humidity because this unit cycles on and off. And uh, we shoot for that average. So we are looking to set our stake gauger to 40 degrees if we are dry aging. And that will ensure that you get an average of 36 to 37 degrees for dry aging. Okay? And uh, if I'm in charcuterie mode, I'm going to set that temperature higher because I want an average of uh, 50 or 55 degrees for doing charcuterie. But just know for um, dry aging, you're going to want that set at 40, and um, that will give you that average temperature. And that, my friends, I think I'm going to put the blue light on because I like it. It looks pretty. That is the setup and unboxing of the Steak Ager Pro 40 with me, Chef Eric Eisenbud, the Grateful Chef. Check out the Steak Ager at www.thesteakager.com. And you can check me out at a lot of places. I've got a Facebook group, The Grateful Chef with Eric Eisenbud. I've got a great uh, Facebook page. And I have a wonderful website, www.eatingwithcheferic.com. So hope you enjoyed this video. And we will see you.